Please listen carefully. Blood and Black Lace is directed by Mario Bava. It was released in 1964 and was screened at the 2018 Fantasia Film Festival thanks to the people at Arrow Video who have restored a beautiful, beautiful 2K copy. A masked serial killer is on the loose in Rome and is killing young female models who work for a local fashion designer. Blood and Black Lace, uh, or Sei Donne per l'Assassino, as it is known in Italy, was released in 1964, and it is significant because it is considered the first giallo, uh, which is a genre that would become extremely important in Italian cinema. The affiliation and the influence that it would have on other Italian directors like Dario Argento is fairly evident uh, when you look at the presentation of the film, especially in the use of primary colors, uh, red especially, that are hyper-saturated, which is something you'll see obviously in Suspiria later on. The film is absolutely exquisite to look at. Bava, who was a painter and a director of photography before becoming a director, really has an incredible eye for composition and color and camera movement and staging. And what makes the film even more impressive visually is how beautiful it looks considering how small the budget actually was they were forced to shoot in under six weeks, and one of my favorite anecdotes about the film is they couldn't actually afford a dolly, so all of the dolly shots, and there are a lot, are done by placing the camera on a child's wagon. And I really think this serves as proof that good lighting, good music, good locations, good costumes, that is what makes a film look far more expensive than it actually is, and that is what makes a film look beautiful more than any amount of money that you can throw at something. I'm no specialist in giallo, I've only seen a couple, but from what I've seen, I can definitely see how this film influenced both visually, but also in terms of theme, in terms of plot, all the other Italian murder mysteries that would come after it. What I do find fascinating, though, is how much it seems to be an intermediate between the Italian giallos that we would come to know and love that are way more out there and way more abstract, like, say, something like Suspiria, but also the more grounded, more Hitchcockian, American-type thriller that we had seen previously in Hollywood. It seems as if Bava is taking the classic whodunit Agatha Christie-type mystery, but is not so much interested in unraveling that mystery and giving out uh, indications as to who the killer might be, but is far more interested in prolonging the stalking sequence and the killing sequences. He dives into violence and horror far more than what you could see with his contemporaries, and even into things like sexuality, even though the film doesn't have any explicit sex scenes. You can definitely tell that it comes from a time and place in Italian society that was extremely conservative, as everyone's dirty little secret in the movie revolves around sex and adultery, and I really think that at the time, Bava was pushing some boundaries. It's typically the kind of film that is too avant-garde to be well-received when it comes out. Uh, it was very much seen as horribly violent and horribly lurid in 1964, but it's also the kind of film that, because it pushes boundaries, because it changes the game, it influences young filmmakers and imprints so much on the minds of a younger audience and whose importance is measured years after it comes out. And if you're not super into Jallo, but like uh, more American horror films, I would also say that it's hard not to see in the emergence uh, in the 70s of the American slasher film, the influence that Bava had even in the establishment of the, that kind of genre. By today's standards, the horror seems obviously tame, but the beautiful, baroque filmmaking that Bava proposes in Blood and Black Lace make this a seminal classic that was one of the 
best films I saw at the festival, frankly, uh, still 50 years later, or 55 years later, if I'm calculating correctly, and is one that I would definitely urge people to go out and seek, especially if you can get a nice Blu-ray transfer. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching the video. As always, hit the like button if you like the video. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe or please consider doing so. And until next time, more Fantasia reviews forthcoming. See ya.